This is a truck, and this is a 5.7 liter V8 that is under the hood of that truck, and it's not very efficient. Currently rocking 19.4 liters per 100 kilometers, that's not good on the old fuel efficiency scale. Basically, I think, and my theory is, any engine can be made efficient, but it's a matter of how many compromises and how many extra added costs it's going to take to get there. Now, this engine combo, truck combo thing, is literally just a truck I had in my inventory already, and also an engine that I had previously made before, so it's not crazy, it's not perfectly matched. Can we tune this thing to be able to get it to run better than it is? Can we get it to run better than a Prius? Quick search online and the all-wheel drive version of the Prius 2023 model will do 4.7 liters per 100 Ks. Can we beat that? <laughs> I don't know, that's a big loss, especially for a big truck like this, but today we find out. Also, we're going to do a little bit of testing in BeamNG. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put like one liter of fuel in this. We're going to drive it and see how far we can get to confirm whether or not this is actually accurate. So, let's see. There are a lot of things that you can do to a vehicle to make it more efficient, but I'm going to start off with the easy stuff. I don't really want to change the entire setup. This is a work truck through and through. It's supposed to be strong. It's supposed to be buff. <laughs> it needs to be able to hold things, and that's the entire idea of this. I don't want to change any of this stuff here in the engine. We're not going to change the displacement or anything like that. We're just going to start off with the basics. First thing we can do is we're making 290.8 horsepower. What if we do a tune for fuel economy using the AI in this game to see if we can get slightly better economy right away at the cost of power. I mean, we're down, what is that, 25 horsepower, but potentially up in the mileage. Let's see. 16.9 liters per 100 Ks. It makes a difference. One tune and we've already lost a, or gained, I should say, a decent amount of mileage. Another big one is weight. How much does this thing weigh? 2,084 kilos. That's, I mean, that's not bad for a big truck like this. The body, I mean, you can assume it's all steel and that kind of thing. Um, this is all fixtures, so I don't think it's going to be coming off anytime soon. However, uh, we might be able to shed some weight in other areas. One of the easy ways to think about this is tires and the things that are rubbing on the road. If you have good tires, Tires, then you're going to get good economy. If I switch to chunky off-road tires and we don't change anything else, then our economy is oh, here 18.3. So again, we have beefy off-road tires, we lose fuel economy. I change them to all terrains and we get slightly better economy, at least better than off-road. And it turns out that the best ones are hard long life with a fuel economy rating of 16.0 liters per 100 Ks. So that's gonna make a big difference. The next thing that we can target, and admittedly this is not an easy fix, but it's gear ratios. <laughs> this thing currently has seven speeds. It's a manual with rear wheel drive, so we don't have to worry about four wheel drive or anything like that. Um, I think I can do better on this gear ratio setup because you can see here, it's way too much. And now that we can actually use all of our gears, at least up to gear six, we definitely don't really need gear seven, but it's not a big deal. The spread is huge on this, so it's basically like a semi-truck, I guess, uh, down to 15.5 with a change of gear ratio. Specifically, final drive is gonna make a big change, um, at least as we drive uh, in seventh gear. 0 0.84, I think my truck, as an example, which is a 5.7 or five seven Hemi, uh, has a ratio of 0 0.6, um, 0 0.69 in fact at the end. Okay, a little bit more tuning down to 14.8. <laughs> this is not going as well as I thought it would to be honest with you. Still with the manual 7 speed, I don't know, maybe that's too many speeds. We can probably try and cut it down to 6, see if that makes any difference in our ratios or improves it at all. Apparently it doesn't matter. So there are other ways to get better economy, and I am sort of running out of ideas at this point. In terms of the body, basically everything that I can do has been changed without getting too drastic. I, I was trying to start off simple. Currently we're rocking 15.2 liters per 100 Ks because I realized that the driveline was plus 15 quality and that just doesn't make any sense. So we're kind of back closer to where we started. I've still managed to improve this by over 4 liters per 100 kilometers, which is almost a full Prius worth of fuel economy gains, if you can believe it. Like that by itself is huge. 
for a truck like this. That would make a massive difference in your fuel bill. That's like a 25% decrease. But there is still a lot more that we can do. And part of the way that we can do that is with the engine and just engine tuning, engine modification, because the reality is that this thing isn't gonna get any lighter until we do stuff like alloy wheels and maybe shrink the tire sizes down and like, it's gonna have to get drastic in order to get to where I want it. But I don't know, let's make the changes we need to make in order to get it down to that Prius level and see how drastic it actually needs to be. So the engine itself, keep in mind this thing used to make uh, I think it was like 290 horsepower, so we don't want to stray too, too far from that. Um, going up to cast, I believe, is going to... Actually, that makes things worse. It's one of the cool things you can do in the engine tab that I honestly don't take advantage of. We have engine efficiency and things here that we can look at, but we also can look directly at the fuel economy right here. So I can see that it's 15.1 liters per 100 Ks with the current setup that I have, and now I know if it gets any better or it gets any worse based on this. So how can we get the economy of this truck to be any better? Well, the Conrads can get a little bit up in the RPM range here. I'm basically going to have to retune the engine completely because I think that's the only way this is actually going to work. Uh, you can see the exhaust is restrictive, the valves and stuff could also use a little bit of work. So maybe if we increase the size of that, get a little bit more power, it might work. Something that people like to theorize about it on forums and stuff is if you get an intake and you get an exhaust, then your fuel economy will increase, but that's not always the case. It kind of depends on your factory system. Like in this truck, it's currently got tubular long headers, which is something that it would never come with from the factory, um, but it does have mufflers, it has cats. Uh, if we cut out the catalytic converter, we might. Actually, we did gain a very slight amount of economy, and we gained power, so <laughs> maybe that's the best way to do it. Cut the mufflers. Those are causing a restriction, and it didn't make a difference. Our headers are a little bit restrictive. If we increase the size of those, we'll make more power, and we are losing economy. <laughs> it's all a bit of a trade-off. I'm going to try to set a goal for myself to not have to lower it below 250 horsepower, but we'll see if that's even possible. I've lowered the exhaust diameter size and we actually gained power because of that. Um, going back to over here, our conrads are still a problem, so we're going to have to upgrade engine internals now to be able to get to where I want to be. Let's go forge light and we should have a lot more RPM to work with. AI tuned for fuel economy and we'll see what it gives us. 306 horsepower, we're actually gaining power now, and it's way, way worse in efficiency. What have I done? So all this tuning has been done on premium fuel. If we increase the fuel quality to super, I, we get more power. Unfortunately, it's not translating to any better economy. But sometimes, like, say you're running a car that asks for premium fuel, asks for a higher octane. If you run that premium fuel, you'll get better fuel economy with it. You'll make more power and you'll get better fuel economy. So it's like a it's a win-win basically. But that isn't always the case. I'm going to have to change the fueling system in this thing to get better efficiency. We're going up to direct injection that immediately cut it down to 15.2. Um, in terms of other efficiencies per cylinder, ITBs on this, is that what it's going to take? Yeah, 14.9 and we're making even more power. More power on the pursuit of economy. Uh, intake manifold, going up to race, maybe? No, we lost it there, yikes. And the fuel is currently set to be extremely lean. Um, let's try and make it even leaner. 15.0, and now we're making a lot more power. It just took crazy parts in order to make that happen. Would a turbocharger or two <laughs> increase the economy of this engine? It's very possible that it would, and kind of hilarious that I've now gone up in 50 horsepower in the pursuit of efficiency. So now that we've changed the RPM limits and the top of the RPM limit especially, um, we can modify this to be different. So manual transmission, it might not be the best way to do this if we go CVT. <laughs> oh my goodness, 23, what happened? That is much, much worse. Hold on a second. You would think that CVT would be more efficient because it would be able to do a lot more. Weirdly, the first gear and this are all tied together at this point, which is awkward. Having a very tall first gear is giving us more efficiency. Yeah, the CVT thing is not working out well. Let's go back to advanced auto, maybe. 
So having a properly tuned gearbox makes a huge difference. 8.7 seconds 0 to 100, which is darn slow for this thing, but it's a manual 7 speed again. Seems like having a lot of speeds and being manual is our best option, and uh, I guess that's what it's going to have to be. <laughs> Alright, back to the engine, I guess. What else can we do to get better economy? Obviously, we can increase the cost of everything in order to do it. Going back to the statistics, we're currently rocking a, an approximate cost of $11,700. So if I increase stuff like, say, the body quality and things that will take a lot of weight off the vehicle like this, uh, then it'll likely increase these costs significantly. You can see that went up and our fuel economy went drastically down. So weight really is our enemy right now. And I think that's probably what I'm going to have to tackle next. It's time for some massive weight reduction. Okay, I'm going for alloy wheels. So we'll try not to get too crazy just yet. I'm going to shrink down the tire size a little bit. Um, just down to 60s, I guess. And we'll go down to like 205s. That is a lot smaller, a lot less road resistance, um, hopefully better. We also have a huge amount of offset, so let's cut that back in a little bit too. So we've immediately lost uh, like 300 kilos, which is excellent. Still making good power. It actually is probably going to be a lot faster in this fuel economy version than the previous one. <laughs> Turns out in order to make good economy, you just got to throw as much performance at it as possible, especially when you're trying to get a brick to go through the wind tunnel. But we're down to 14.2, which is excellent. I still want to drop another 10. We're going to go flow optimized for the under tray just to see what that does for our numbers. 13.9. Can you imagine this with an under tray? <laughs> Maybe a skid tray or something for rock crawling, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'd expect this to be flow optimized. Easy way to do it, by the way, just go to lightness in the optimized weight section. This should cut a lot off of this thing down to 13.8 and uh, it didn't do much actually wow I mean there are other ways to cut weight aren't there drop down to aluminum that makes a huge difference and the chassis uh, basically will pick the lightest one which is AHS steel again makes a big difference we have leafs in the front and the back I'm actually just gonna switch to coils in the front and the back uh, you'll see the reason soon and I mean we could go carbon fiber and stuff, but <laughs> it's just not gonna happen Also plus 15 quality Yeah, this is a high quality body. This is a racing truck now down to 1500 kilos. That is another drop of almost 300 and for performance uh, Sorry detailed stats 13.4 and we're up to 50 grand. So the cost has been multiplied by five and the fuel economy is honestly not that much better. <laughs> Let's make it even worse. Okay, I'm back into gearing and I've been able to drop it down a little bit extra. Um, ah, I don't wanna, I don't, <laughs> full quality. This is gonna get very expensive very quickly. Full quality wheels too, this should really help. That's 12.8, that's really darn good. <laughs> it's incredibly encouraging. Um, hmm, is this going to make things better or worse for us? Let's see. 12.6, wow. $94,000. <laughs> Increasing the aerodynamics quality as well should make it, yeah, that did a, a bunch. 12.2, nice, very nice. Cooling airflow. <laughs> the drag coefficient will lower if we lower this, so our fuel economy will technically get better. Although, with the way that the game puts this, you never really need to change it. It's kind of pointless. I honestly never touched this. So we have huge drum brakes on the front and the back. Um, it honestly doesn't matter that much. I'm just gonna go discs just because it's like slightly lighter. We'll up to four pistons and that should give us some actual brakes, which is good. Over to the suspension, the reason I went with the coils is because we can lower it, which should theoretically improve economy, although it doesn't seem to do much but having a lower center of gravity and also not cutting through the wind as much is going to improve your fuel economy there's a reason that ram trucks have air suspension that lowers you when you go speeds on the highway um, it's because it doesn't have to block as much wind as it's barreling through and therefore much better economy at least in theory and then you replace those things with like fox shocks or something and you're good all right, fine. I will make drastic engine changes in order to make this happen. 
Okay, let's go. High quality this, high quality this, and 11.1 .1 immediately. Oh, here we go, here we go. Hopefully we don't need a turbo. Uh, high quality injection, 10.3, 400 horsepower. Things are getting out of this world now. High quality here, and uh, I think we're gonna have to do a retune. Tune it for the economy, please, and thank you. 10.3, 424 horsepower goodness again i want to reiterate that i'm taking things to the extreme here trying to get prius economy out of a big truck uh, and especially out of a v8 the way i had it before was the more realistic way and i guess i mean we saw a 25 percent decrease in fuel usage right so that that by itself is huge i think one thing to keep in mind is if you have a very efficient car it is ridiculously difficult to get a 25 percent increase but for something like a truck where it's very inefficient even like taking off accessories or taking weight out of it or something is going to make a huge difference in your economy stuff like if you drive a, a pickup truck and you have off-road tires or all-terrain tires if you switch to a more economical tire even just like a sport tire or, or all season or something you're going to save a decent amount of fuel right then and there like that's that's how it goes so it makes a difference it makes a huge difference better airflow headers actually got us underneath the 10 liter per 100 kilometer range i just want to put things in perspective by the way with this um so my truck as i said before is a 5.7 hemi ram and i average about 12 liters per 100 kilometers most of my driving is highway but i do city stuff as well um, i used to drive it to work every day i don't do that anymore um, but I average about 12 liters per 100 Ks, and it does make 395 horsepower. So we're making uh, currently 25 more horsepower than that, and we are getting, uh, let's say, 20% better economy. That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I've had to make some serious sacrifices to get there. Look at those headers. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, but we might have to go eco-turbos to get this thing to work. 9.9. .9 okay we're pulling out the big guns there there is only one way to get this kind of economy and it's gonna have to be i know you might be scared i'm scared too but uh carbon fiber <laughs> that's it back into the car model we're going carbon fiber for our interior and it's currently a ladder frame um we're gonna have to drop it down as low as it'll go monocoque truck <laughs> doesn't make any sense doesn't matter it, it, it has to we have to get here carbon fiber chassis literally the lightest possible things i can get we're going mcpherson strut push rods 9.2 yikes i'm gonna unlock this here which is probably gonna screw with the entire engine that i'm building up goes the quality once again and over here 8.5 that makes a big difference aluminum light is that gonna destroy it 8.5 again we're still rocking push rods we're still double the prius economy we've got to get there i'm so darn close okay i've screwed with the gearing considerably and given us a top speed of 764 <laughs> which is crazy and uh not realistic in the slightest but i'm gonna actually cap it like somewhere here ish i guess like maybe 400 um, 7.4 is good, but the only way I'm going to get there is with this ridiculous tuning. And I th have a theory, I have a game theory. We're taking our 500 horsepower truck and making it slower on purpose in order to actually get this thing to work properly. 7.4, oh my goodness. Is any of this stuff going to be better? I don't think it would. It just adds weight and complexity. I'm going to try to avoid it shall we take things up to the extreme <laughs> it's a lot lower than it used to be which is darn good um if we take away uh, width should make a big difference it's actually improving it even though i'm increasing it so obviously my ideas were incorrect there but i guess i can just keep going until it does more i'm hopeful that oh 7.3 oh my goodness I'm increasing weight, but I guess having more width on the front is actually a good thing. Maybe that just means the tires aren't as crushed or something at the front. 7.2 with 295s? What on this planet is happening? Um, I'm going to take offset out of the front, which is weight loss. 
and actually I'm just going to take all the offset out of the front. Screw it. Say goodbye to that offset. That should be weight. And we just keep going. Okay, I can't pretend to understand what's going on here because in my mind, and again, I'm not perfect at this stuff, but higher rolling resistance and larger tires means worse economy. But evidently, for the sake of the game, it doesn't. And in fact, it means better economy. I don't know if that's just broken or something, but I've been able to lose like 0.2 or 3 liters per 100 Ks just by having absolutely massive wheels. So I don't know what's going on anymore, but uh, I'm happy with it. Let's keep going. 7.0 with much, much smaller diameter. I think if I keep going like this, we'll just get better and better. I mean, keep in mind that changing the overall diameter of your tires also changes your gear ratio. So yeah, it's important. Oh my goodness, <laughs> is this what it looks like to have the best economy? Absolutely <laughs> donked out, super wide wheels. 6.8, man. What is going on in this game? I am reaching the point where I am running out of things that I can do to make this better. 6.8 liters per 100 Ks is currently the best that I can get. Uh, and just to put it in perspective, the engine currently makes, going over to uh, the performance wait no no design there we go 526 horsepower uh, i have been able to cut a serious amount of mass off this and i think that might be as low as i can get but that is a lot less weight than was on there before the thing is entirely made out of carbon fiber we are actually making another like 200 horsepower compared to what it was previously 236 horsepower uh, and yet our economy is like single digits, which is crazy. It is nearly Prius level. It is basically, it's almost at the point uh, where my wife's RAV4 hybrid is, which is the same drivetrain as the Prius. That thing will average around six and a half liters per hundred Ks. And then if you really try and drive it nice, it'll do about five. Um, but six and a half is kind of where it lands. This thing, He's darn close to that. Now, <laughs> there, there has to be a way to get better economy, and it's going to be me going through this engine and tuning it to the best of my abilities. I think that's going to be it. <laughs> that's probably the only thing we can do. we got a lot of fuel to work with. I'm using the highest quality components. What else can we do? Let's just put it to work. Having a really high compression ratio will actually lose us power, but again, I only really want to make it over... 250 so if we lose power for the sake of economy i don't care in this case so we're having a 16 to 1 compression ratio this thing might as well be a diesel having a cam profile that's lower is a similar thing where we're losing power we're losing power pretty drastically in fact but we're gaining so much fuel economy oh look at that okay super low cam profile 236 horsepower but we've got 5.3 oh that might not be a full trade-off there. That's kind of a bad idea, but it's cool. It's darn cool. 4.7, I did it. I actually did it. Oh my goodness. It's currently super broken right now and it doesn't want to exist, but I've managed to get it to be 4.7. Oh man, 230 horses. I, You know what? I don't even care about that previous goal. I guess we can try to get the cam profile up a little bit. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, 4.7 4 liters per 100 Ks. I actually managed to match the all-wheel drive Prius for fuel economy. As ridiculous as that sounds, that is insane. Okay, we're going to have to go back to gearing because now that I've changed the RPM limit again, everything needs to change. Uh, okay, <laughs> let me see here. Yeah, it kind of adapted itself. Really, not as much needs to change as I thought, but... I can't believe it. It actually genuinely works, and it still does 5.5 um, for, for 100 kilometers. So even with seven gears, <laughs> 230 horsepower, that was a major, major sacrifice because we were well over 500. So I've cut it down by more than half in order to get my goals. 4.7 liters per 100 Ks. Boys, I think that I've learned something today. At the end of the day, this is automation. It's a game, it's not super accurate, but it's as close as we're gonna get for now without actually buying a V8 and trying to 
test it, which is something I'd absolutely love to do. And in order to make that kind of stuff happen, of course, there is a missing ingredient, and that is money. Taking a look at the detailed stats, we are up to $664,000. Keep in mind, this was an $11,000 truck, and now it is over half a million dollars because I tried to get the best fuel economy that I possibly could. <laughs> it wouldn't be like this in real life. That would be bananas, but I think you can see what I mean. I've seen YouTube videos. Actually, I didn't actually watch them, but I've seen thumbnails of people putting like uh, lawnmower carburetors on engines trying to get the best economy they can and stuff and that is just super cool I love that kind of thing hypermiling is something I am interested in I just don't really have time to go through with it I do log my mileage um, and I take pictures of all my stuff so that's how I know how my vehicles are doing in terms of their own mileage but I just wanted to say before we get into BMG um, I want to keep doing projects like this, and I, I would love to do stuff like this in real life, but I need your support, so check me out on Patreon, YouTube supporters group and stuff, and obviously just liking this video and commenting and being all the way here is, is enough, so thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, let's uh, let's take this Prius economy truck into BeamNG with a little bit of a paint job. It's going to look unique. <laughs> let's see what it actually gets when we drive it. Or at least when I try my best to get good economy. So this is what the truck looks like in BeamNG. Big V8 still. It still sounds good. I mean, it's got really good components in it, so I'm happy with the thing. Uh, you can see there that we have a fuel consumption reader and a range thing and all that sort of stuff. I haven't actually gone anywhere, so it has nothing to track, but... Yeah, we've got some, some numbers to read, which is good and always fun. So I mentioned in the video, I mean, if I didn't cut it out of the thing, but I'm like, what did we learn today? <laughs> and I, uh, I think that the answer to that question is fairly straightforward. Um, if you want to take an engine that is inherently inefficient and make it efficient in a vehicle that is inefficient inherently, so inherently inefficient vehicle, inherently inefficient engine, you're going to have to make some ridiculous changes. Like if you wanted to make a dump truck or something like that, be very, very efficient like a Prius, it's going to take a lot of work. <laughs> and I don't know, that's disappointing in a way, but it makes sense if you just think about basic physics. Um, but it is kind of fun to mess around with this stuff, even if the answer is super obvious. And why not learn together and figure it out? <laughs> so I've added cruise control as well as that fuel economy thing to the tab. You can see we're currently doing uh, 14 liters per 100 kilometers, something like that. So I'm just going to hit cruise. I'm going to set it to uh, 100 instead of 125. And I'm going to try to get the mileage that it said it has. Um, doing 100 kilometers an hour, maybe we can do even less. But I'm going to shift up to 7th, which means we're running darn low on the uh, RPMs. It's running like 900 RPM right now. And we're doing 10 point something liters per 100 kilometers with a range of over 900 Ks. That's pretty good, actually. That is not bad. And the con economy there is just getting better and better as we coast along 9.3, 9.2. I'm just going to let it sit for a second and see if it gets any better. Okay, so it seems like this fuel consumption thing is actually an average because the reason it was dropping is because my economy was actually getting better. I am indeed getting the 4 point whatever I was guaranteed in game because look, it's, it's like 4.8, 4.9. If I reset it again, then we'll get... Uh, it's all over the place in these averages. It's like 5-ish. It's just under 5. If I drop this down, say like 90 kilometers, 4.1, 4.2. Oh, that is beautiful. That is really darn good. Okay, <laughs> let's do something else. So I've given myself one liter of fuel, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to try and use it all here. One liter of fuel, currently idling. Let's reset this, and I'm just going to drive it as hard as I possibly can and see how long we can go for. Oh my goodness, it's not liking any second of this. Fuel consumption over the course of this one liter is going to be absolutely ridiculous. And it still thinks we can do like two kilometers or so, which is bananas. I didn't think that that would actually be possible. But I'm curious if I can get back to base driving at a, well, basically all out. Um, only with one liter of fuel. <laughs> we might be able to do it. This engine is very, very efficient, even at high RPMs and such. It's just a very efficient engine overall. I think one of the interesting things 
that I've seen. I, it was Top Gear probably that did this. Um, oh geez, I think we're running out of fuel because I can't get past 294, 295. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, but yeah, Top Gear, they, uh, they ran, we literally have 0.2 fuel left, by the way. That is not, <laughs> that is not much. I still think I'm going to make it. Um, but they ran a Prius around the track and they also ran a Porsche. And the Prius was running full out, it was running as fast as it could. And the Porsche was just doing laps behind the Prius. But the Prius used more fuel than the Porsche. And the reason why is because the Prius was going all out, it was doing the best that it could. And my goodness, I actually pretty much made it back <laughs> that same distance, except driving as fast as I can. Yikes, that was cool. But at, at the end of the day, I mean, if you want to just improve the fuel economy in your own car, the best thing that you can do is clean it and keep it clean. Keep it, keep it like as organized as you can so there's not random junk in your car that doesn't need to be there. I mean, you can, that that by itself is weight reduction, and that's how I like to see it. Another easy thing is just to be up to date on your maintenance. Good maintenance also means good economy. If your oil is crap or the wrong type of oil, then your engine will perform worse, and your economy will also be worse because of it. Uh, tires, brakes, bearings, all that sort of stuff. Anything that touches the road, it's going to matter a lot when it comes to fuel mileage. And if you have damage or something that's causing a... <laughs> it's causing an aerodynamic uh, decrease, then you're probably going to want to fix that too. And the ultimate one, the easiest one to fix, is your driving habits. If you drive full out like I am right now, shift always at the top of the range, you're just bombing it on every corner, doing burnouts and stuff, your fuel economy is going to suck. You're going to be having fun, I'm sure, but your economy is going to suck. So sometimes, you got to lay off it a little bit, take it easy, go slowly. <laughs> Don't be afraid to coast a little bit if you got to do that. Um, Hypermilers have all sorts of techniques and stuff that don't involve, uh, well, don't involve crazy modifications. The reality is the biggest modification you can make is your lead foot. Like the reality is that somebody who is good at hypermiling could get into your car and get better fuel economy than you just on technique alone. And if you got into their car, you would likely not get very good economy because it takes a certain technique to drive it in a way that makes it economical. <laughs> I don't know, that's just how it works. That's something I think about a lot. I'm a little bit of a lead foot, but uh, thanks to hybrids, it doesn't matter as much because you do start an electric. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I will see you again next time. Maybe we should drag race this thing. Maybe we should modify it more. Let me know what you want to see next. I have a lot of ideas, but I'm always looking for more. And as I said before, be sure to support me if you're interested on my various uh, things, Patreon, YouTube members, or just being here and watching these videos is always good. I'm trying to hit 60k subs by the end of the year, so I would appreciate it if you got subscribed. And um, yeah, got a lot of goals, got a lot of dreams. Maybe one day we buy a ramp truck like this, what do you think? <laughs> Alright, see you again soon. I'd like to give a special shout out to those who are in the V8 tier of my join button. Uh, group or the channel members I should say man I'm like way off these days it's super late at night I'm very tired <laughs> overlord terrio one sin lab j pope davis heister baja blast goofy plays phoenix shark man city country shadow jasper i look volheim milk thank you for watching everybody I'll see you again soon more stuff to come and uh yeah i got to go to sleep <laughs> see you guys again with more stuff coming up. I'm sorry that I missed Halloween this year. I just like completely blew that. I completely forgot. Oh man, I'm so out of it these days, man. See you again soon.